darker than the uh, paper color that I didn't do. And you can turn, we're not going to sit there just yet, because I have a lot of other things, or a few other things I want to say uh, tonight. We've been talking about sanctification, we've been talking about it in means of uh, worship to God, and how that our sanctified life is an element of worship to God. It's what God longs to see and hear from us. It's more than uh, articulation of words when we come together. Uh, it's more than raising of hands. It's more than what everyone sees on the outward of you. It's what God sees when He looks at you. Brother Eli, you, you, I felt like you, you said something that I, I wish I would have rehearsed and said a little earlier on Sunday morning when you testified. You said about it, um, the woman caught in, 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 in adultery and the woman at the well. Um, Jesus did minister to them and didn't condemn them, but offered them forgiveness. But the greatest factor that he did say is, as you said, brother, is go and sin no more. The responsibility was, once the encounter was with Christ, that there was a responsibility to no longer sin. And uh, uh, that's, that's what God wants of us. And in our Christian walk, we are never, ever, ever, ever going to retire. We're never, ever going to retire in our Christian walk. And I know some folks, they think they can, you know. They live for a particular while when they get older. They, uh, you know, or, or maybe it's not even older. Maybe they've done it for a while. And uh, they think that, uh, well, I, 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 I've reached it. I don't need to be as committed as I used to be. But we are going to be in this Christian walk until the day that we breathe our last breath. And we are commanded to follow Christ and follow Him in such a way that we live a sanctified life till we breathe our last breath. More and so, what's that? More and more. More and more. That's right. And so, you know, that's encouraging. I prayed for that couple tonight. You know, to, to follow. And we see life changes and, and, and the dynamics of life. And, 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 you know, the caregiving, the roles reverse, and, 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 and even with parents and children. And children take care of parents where once the roles were different. So that helps us, Brother Craig and Sister Rachel, and our, 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 our earliness of raising children. Remembering they will they will raise us someday. They will care for us. Amen. And so, <laughs> just a little bit of humor there. Just a little bit of humor. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, where we we are. And, but but as I did hear that from Sister Jean, I was thinking their walk with Christ is it's different because they're they're at a different place and and their roles and what they're doing. But nonetheless, for all of us in our life, we are going to be following after Christ till the day that we die, and we're going to be practicing sanctification in our life and perfecting Christ in everything of our life because life is a change. And so uh, 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 we, we are... We are to be sanctified. We've looked at that word sanctified. It means to be set apart, to be holy, to make uh, uh, holy, to make pure. The word sanctified itself comes from a word which is sanctus, S-A-N-C-T-U-S, which means, uh, 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 in itself, it means separation. And so it means setting apart, and particularly for purifying or holiness. And then we add that word shun to it, where it's no longer sanctus, but it's sanctification uh, from that Greek, or I'm sorry, that Latin word sanctus. And uh, it, it, when we add that word shun to the root uh, word sanctus, that Latin word, it means a process or an ongoing process of sanctification. So when we think about that, sanctification is an ongoing process. We, we, we truly do evolve in our life. Amen. Uh, now, the, the world would run with that and, and, and think evolution. But we are evolving into who God has called us to be. We're evolving into what our future would be. Uh, 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 and so as we are, uh, we're, we're making those revolutions and we're processing and going, we are also with Christ. And we are being sanctified. It's an ongoing process of becoming holy. Progressive holiness, becoming holiness, takes a lifetime. Can I say that again? Becoming holiness takes a lifetime. 
Whatever that is for different people, everybody spans differently, but uh, 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 progressive holiness takes a lifetime. And so uh, two things that are said there, that if it takes a lifetime, that means it takes time. Now, any of you like me, that you're impatient, I want the one now. You know, when your computer don't move as fast as you want it to go, uh, when, 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 when traffic doesn't move as fast as you want traffic to move, you know, I want it, I want it now. You know, but, I, but the thing with it is, is realizing that this life of sanctification takes patience because it takes time. It's a lifetime. And so that's just a great thought for us to look at tonight. When we look back in our life, when we look back a year, when we look back 10 years, we should look back and see that we are different. And we should see a tangibleness, if you would, in the evidence that God has worked in us. Stop. Right now, close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Now think about where you are right now, a year ago, where were you? Can you see tangibleness of God? God in your life sanctifying you, there's evidence. Now instead of a year, go back to 10 years. Look at who you were 10 years ago. Can you see tangible evidence that God has sanctified you? You can open your eyes. Sometimes it's good just to stop. Because if God hasn't changed you in the past year or the past 10 years, it's not because God didn't want to. But we've not yielded ourselves as an instrument. And we've not chosen the way of sanctification. We'll talk a little bit more about that this evening. So, you know, one thing that is for sure is that our character is what we are when no one is watching us. And so I want you to think about this scenario. What would it be like if there was a teenager and his parents left him or her at home by himself? Now, always, you know, parents are there, you know, and, and, and you know, giving instruction, the guidelines, the balance are set, and this is the way that we live in our house. But parents are gone. And so the, uh, the, the teenager is home by himself. And so how they respond when they think no one is looking and what they do is a marker of their character. Because no one's around, no one's sick. And so when we think about how are we living holy, how are we living sanctified, a marker would be what is our character like when no one else is around and when no one else is looking. That is a marker of how sanctification is in our life. And so when we look at that, we look at Joseph is a prime example. He is an excellent example of, of, of sanctification. When we look at him, he was treated unfairly by his brothers and he was sold into slavery. But yet we look at his response and his response is a true character of what sanctification is in a life of someone who really loves and trusts God more than what the present circumstances is. And uh, he ended up uh, uh, in prison with no fault of his own. Now, I know that there may be some people in prison that have been falsely and wrongly accused, but for the majority, they're probably not, okay? Just probably. But here is this man, and he's truly in prison, not because of what he's done, but because he was absolutely falsely accused. And so here it is that uh, through all the prison, he refused to become angry with God. Do you know what? Your escape card or anyone else's escape card to say, well, God allowed this to happen, or I seen what other Christians did, or those people in the church, they've done that. You know what? That is nothing but a blank, empty experience. Excuse. You know what? Your responsibility and my responsibility is to live holy before God when no one is looking, even when things are done unjustly to us, and they will be. Amen. Sometimes it's the people that you would expect very least to treat you unjustly that do it unjustly. And I hate to say it, but a lot of times uh, uh, in my own personal life, it's been more Christians who have mistreated me than non-Christians. That's sad. However, 
However, my response is mine with how I will, uh, how I'll turn out. Uh, and as Joseph, he's an excellent example of sanctification when, 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 when everything has gone went wrong. He was in charge of Potiphar's house. Now, I want you to imagine, I'm going to look at Scripture a little bit more here in a second. I know I'm going to be reading it, but just think for a moment. So Potiphar, uh, his position was that he was captain of the guard, which when we look at that, he was second in command underneath of Pharaoh. So here is this man, there is Pharaoh, there is Potiphar, and Potiphar chooses to put Joseph in charge of everything that he has. How amazing is that? And uh, as he's put in charge of that, I mean, what a great position to be entrusted with. And so Potiphar's wife is this absolutely beautiful lady. She's rich. She has everything that she wants. But, but likewise, it is said of Joseph, a very strikingly handsome man. He is amazing in his character, his whole persona, and who he is. And she sees him, and she wants him. And so the Bible says that, 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 that in this case, uh, with, with, with Joseph, he leaves his coat, but he does not leave his character. So the greatest thing in our life, when we walk the walk of sanctification, no matter how we're treated, no matter how we're done, the most important thing is they may take your coat, but they cannot take your character. And so our character has to be who we are before God at all times. And really our character is developed and it is spoken and it is saw most of all by God through the power of His Spirit when we live a sanctified life. That's amazing. And so let's turn, let's look at Joseph for a few moments. And that's really what I want to do tonight. In these next few moments, I want to look at Joseph as we look at sanctification and see how that really links with this man who is an example of sanctification. He is a type of Christ. Uh, his, 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 his character is impeccable. His life is nothing but easy. But he really comes out shining because he's faithful to God. So let's look at this. Really, if you want to, if you want to come out shining in the end, look at this man. Uh, and me as well, look at this man and let's, let's see what we can glean from his life and his experience so that we can be blessed of God as he was blessed of God. The Bible says that Joseph was brought down to Egypt and, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, once again, but second in command here in Egypt, and then he makes a Joseph in charge of his whole house. He, he uh, 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 out of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down together. Remember, his brothers sell him. His brothers are angry against him. He has this dream. He has this vision. He holds to it. He shares the vision. You know, you can share your vision of what God has spoken to you and what God wants to do. Not everybody is going to buy into it. But if you know that God has spoken to you, even when others get jealous, even when others are envious, Trust God with the vision. And so here he is. The Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. It was Joseph's choice for God to be with him, and because he chose for God to be with him, the Word of God says that he was prosperous. You want to prosper in your life, amen, and, and prosperity doesn't look so great when we look at Joseph's life, but he did prosper, even in adversity, because he kept God first. If we will keep God first and we will remember that God's character must shine through our character, God will bless us. And that comes from the Word of God. Amen. And he was in the house of, of, of his master, the Egyptian. Amen. The Bible says that really uh, some eight times throughout the course of this chapter that, 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 that uh, God was with Joseph or God blessed Joseph. And so eight speaks of the resurrection. The number eight is, is, is indicative of the resurrection. When we look at numerology, typology, we see the resurrection in that. And so whatever happens, and however at first it seems at the moment, just remember, Joseph, that resurrection is coming. Do you hear that tonight? That's good. Just remember that resurrection is coming. It may look adverse, it may look bad, it may look dead, it may look terrible, but resurrection is coming. And so, uh, 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 linked and connected to that, being blessed of the Lord, eight times throughout this chapter, is the thought of resurrection. The Bible says that his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that uh, he did to, to prosper in his hands. And so, most modern 
day Christians, uh, uh, you know, uh, we see that the hand of the Lord was upon Joseph. Amen. And, and so as we see that, uh, uh, understand this, that unfortunately, when the hand of God is upon you, that unfortunately and regrettably, some people will be against you because God's hand is upon you. They can't stand the blessing that God has worked in your life. And they're going to enter uh, what God is doing by actions and by attitudes. Hello! If they did it to Joseph, they're going to do it to us. Yeah. The Bible says, And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made, uh, and he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had uh, put... Uh, 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 he put into his hands. My, my words here, sometimes I'm just using my own terminology as I read this. Just bear with me. Uh, 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 and so here it is that although it doesn't imply anything here that Potiphar was acquainted with Jehovah, he seen that the hand of the Lord was upon Joseph and he wanted him because of that blessing. Do you know what folks will see when the hand of the Lord is upon us? And when they bless us, they'll want to be a partaker of what is in our life because the hand of God is evident and working. Amen. I, 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 I do believe, amen, that God will prosper. I don't believe with jets and I don't believe with big bank accounts. Maybe some, not, not all, probably most, not all. Amen. But what He is going to do is prosper us in our life and what He has called us to do. Amen. And the Bible says, and, and it came, back, uh, came to pass uh, from that time that, that, uh, the, 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 that He had made him overseer in His house uh, and over all that He had. And the Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake. Amen. Do you know what? We are going to be blessed not because of Joseph's sake, but because we as believers have Jesus Christ upon us. And where we are is going to bring blessing to people. And so, uh, you know, Brother Craig and Sister Rachel, where you are in your business, I believe that because of who you are in Christ, amen, people will be blessed because you show Jesus and share Jesus. And so, Brother Justin at Walmart, folks will be blessed at Walmart because you share Jesus. Uh, Sister Tina, in the banking, because of who you are. Brother Doug, in the prison. Brother Eli, as you're there uh, in, in, in the laundry network. Sister God, as you are doing your, your, your life and your duties in, in the, in the uh, park in which you live. Sister Rachel, Sister Holly, as your mothers, your children will see that. Daniel, as you go about your life and your day, Sister Beth, as you're there in school. Be, people will be blessed simply because you show Jesus. Amen. And, and the house of Potiphar was blessed because here was Joseph who was living a life that was pleasing to God and it blessed the home in which he lived. No, we can be a blessing simply because of whose we are and whose we desire to, to, to have favor and please in our everyday life. Think of it that way. Amen. Just added blessing because of who we are in Christ. All right, and the Bible says, and the blessing of the Lord was upon uh, all that he had in the house uh, and in the field. So the blessing went far. And, and, and he, he maintained faith in God and everything that he did. Amen. God blessed. Amen. Uh, praise God. Amen. Let's just humble ourselves. Don't allow bitterness to overtake us. For crying out loud, do you look at a man who's ripped away from his mom, his dad, his siblings, and taken and living in another country? I would not like that. Amen. Everything that I know, except for me and my dream, ripped and taken away. Not by my choice, but because of wrong and evil doing. And here I am. But he didn't allow bitterness to overtake him. Amen. So the grumbling needs to go. The bad circumstances. What has been. Amen. Uh, don't let that get you down. Trust God. Amen. This guy was not grumbling in all he did in Potiphar's house and in Potiphar's field. Or it wouldn't have been blessed. He trusted God. It's a sanctified life. Amen. Living sanctified that we're trusting God. That's huge. So here he is. The Bible says that he left all that he had in Joseph's hands and he knew uh, not uh, uh, what he had. Save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a, a goodly person and well favored. Let's stop there for a second. Potiphar didn't even count his coins, Brother Craig, because he knew that Joseph was a, an honest and an integral person. Listen, uh, everyone around us shouldn't have to worry about uh, 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 their belongings or things. They should trust us 
knowing that with integrity, we are going to take care of their things because we serve God with a wonderful attitude and we do it with good character. That is sanctification. Yes. So, let's move on. Oh. So, the Bible, when it says that he was well favored, he was, he was peaceable, he was honest, uh, and he was a very a handsome man. If you study all that, that all kind of links together there. And it came to pass after these things that, that his wife uh, cast her eyes upon Joseph and said, Let me lie, uh, 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 lie with me. And um, tradition says her name, and I'm going to try to say it. Was Zaluka? Uh, what a name, right? And uh, that that she was a, a virtuous woman, and uh, she saw Joseph, and uh, she really lost all self control, and she became a slave of passion. Now, in our on our world, uh, women and men both can become slaves of passion, and especially when they see and take for people. Uh, you know, I'm just going to stop there. Be integral. Be integral even if others aren't. And so uh, uh, here it is that tradition said that she called a party and had all the men in the house go out except for Joseph. And not that she, she intentionally uh, let Joseph know this, but he had to do business things in the house. And all these women, and they admired Joseph, how good looking and how wonderful that, that, that he was. And, and, and so uh, with acclaim, all these 40 women, this is tradition, this is interesting to me, uh, but the tradition has told of this, said that all these 40 women said, he must be an angel. So that tells you what Joseph looked like. Love it up, research it yourself. And so the Bible says, but he refused and said to his master's wife, wait a second, behold, my master, he, he trusts me with all that's within his house, and he's, he's trusted everything, everything uh, uh, that he has to my hands. And so here is Joseph, and he's resisting temptation. Now, just because we love God and just because we've been living a sanctified life, just because we're saved, just because we're walking in the Spirit, doesn't mean that we're never going to be tempted. Amen. Remember John Wesley said, you, can, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from building a nest in your hair, which means you can't stop fleeing thoughts and different things happening, but you can't stop them from coming and building a lodging place and staying there. So here's Joseph. He resists. It was a, a conscious uh, a, 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 a decision that he made on his own. I, I'm not doing this. That is not integral. My master has <coughs> trusted me with everything, and I'm not doing this to him. I'm not doing this to his wife. And the Bible says, There is none greater in the house uh, than I, neither has he kept anything back from me but you. Because you are his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So let's look at three things here. Joseph said, wait a second, there are three things that I'm thankful for. He said, I'm thankful I have gratitude in my heart for everything that my master has given to me. So there is no way that I'm going to take what he has blessed me with, my gratitude, far out of expedience. Your temptation to me. He said, and the second thing is, you are his wife and you are off limits. And the third thing he says, and the final thing, and, and some may look and think he has it out of order, but, but, but I believe that the word of God is stating. He says, this, the, the, the third thing is, he said, it's a sin against God. I fear God. I'm not doing it. And so Joseph he thought about this act and how it would look with his life in the sight of God and what God would think about. And so right here, Joseph is a magnificent example of sanctification because he says, listen, I want God to be pleased by what I'm doing. I want to do right by God. You want your life to be blessed. 
Even when life goes wrong and you're honoring God, God can bless you and those round about you if you will honor God. Stop grumbling, bickering, thinking about what you don't have and what you should have had and how you've been given an injustice and say, God, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to live right and do right because I honor you and I'm holding to the dream and the vision you give, not what people's done against me. Some things are off limits to us as Christians. The boundaries, the lines have been drawn. They're not ours to partake in. So we say, no, this is off limits to me. It's not my. I have gratitude for what's been given to me, my position, where I'm at. And so this is off limits. The third thing is I fear to God. In our life, we should be thinking about our life, our character, who we are, and fear the reverence. Everybody else is gone. She sent all the men out. And some may say, well, what was Joseph doing there? Joseph probably didn't want to be in situations that were bad, but he had a responsibility to do it. His job caused him to have to go and take care of the house of Potiphar. Sometimes there are responsibilities in life that we're, 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 we're attached to, and we have to do that. But with those responsibilities could be areas that could call us to, to blurring and marring our reputation and taking us to a life where we don't live sanctified. And so we have to set the boundaries and say, no, I'm not going there. This is not mine. I have gratitude for what I have, and I fear God. That's all. The Bible says, and it came to pass, as she spoke to, jo uh, uh, spoke to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened unto her to lie with him or, 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 or to be with her. Listen, it was a continual temptation. It happened day after day after day. And it came to pass uh, about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business when there was none of the men in the house. Once again, he's there. He asked to do his business, and she caught him by the garment. Say, lie with me. The Bible says that he left his garment in her hand and he fled and he got him out. You see, this is the occasion that speaks about the sacredness of Joseph's life. Amen. We look at him and this is just absolutely amazing as we think about everything that is said here in this verse. Think about him. She takes his garment. Has this been the first time his garment was taken? No. No. His brother took it, tore it up, because they were jealous of it, and they tore it up. Just said, mm -mm, I've had my life taken before, and I've come out in God's blessing. You take my heart, but you will not take my character. It didn't matter. He left his garment. See, she tried to hide hers in the same manner. The Bible says, and when it came to pass, when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled, that she called forth of the men of the house, and she spoke unto them, saying, See here, Potiphar has brought in this Hebrew unto us to mock us, and he came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. We know the story. And here it comes that Joseph goes to prison for years. For years. Talk about wasted years or what seems to be wasted. But it was evident in the years that his character had come in God. Jehovah he had trusted, he had hoped to, and God brought him up out of prison and put him in a position that was greater His brother and come, they don't recognize him, but he recognizes them. They took his garment, but they did not take the character and the dream of a man who wanted to live a life pleasing and sanctified before God. How does that speak to us tonight? They can take your garment. When God blesses, there are others 
who will so much want your position and where you are at. And they'll want to rob and destroy and take the blessing away. But your blessing ripples farther than you. And be it known that they can walk against you, but they can never take the hand of God off your life. A sanctified life is our choice. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may be able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen. Let's, in our life, make sure that we're living our life in such a way that the magnitude of our character shines through even if our cloak is stolen from us multiple times. Know that things have happened in all of our lives. We don't like things. It's all our choice of how we'll respond to things. I believe this, that anytime any of us go through grief, that it is normal and natural, the first thing that we feel is that anger. It's the first thing that creeps its head up. Well, let me say this. It's denial. And then it's anger. That's the steps of grief. We don't have to go to a funeral to experience grief. That may be. Some people get bitter because of losses in life. Sometimes it's different things that don't go the way that they projected or thought it would. And so we are in denial. How long we live in that anger, how we choose to deal with it, becomes our choice. But we need to choose the character of Christ as Joseph did. So I'm not looking at it. My brother might have done me wrong. This is where God has me. I'm going to trust God in this. Potiphar's wife does him wrong. He could have been a very bitter man, stuck in prison. How would you like that? I would like that. And trust me, they weren't watching TV and getting more education and in a weight room and eating square meals. That's not how prison was then. There were years, but it did not affect the character. The prison was blessed because of Joseph, and he moved up in prison because God's hand was on him. I'm talking about a life of sanctification. We may not even have a million bucks in our pocket. We live in a mansion. But it will mean this. That we'll be able to look back on our life and tangibly see how God is meant to us. So, God, in, in Joseph's life, he looks at Potiphar's. If he does any reflection at night when he goes to bed, on his pillow, he says, God's going to spend on this. In the prison, in the not-so-comfy bed. He reflects some years later and says, but I see evidence of how God sanctified me in my life because I trust Him. Let's do this. I'm done. Anybody have any thoughts, comments? I, mean, I don't hope this was as powerful for you as what it's what, what been for me. I mean, we talk about Joseph in a lot of ways, but I believe we'll be bringing to be a type of Christ, an example of the believer in sanctification. We just bring them to a whole new level when we see a man who lives a life that in his terminology was pleasing to Jehovah.